Hello, welcome to my channel. I am Kristen Nicole Mann and I am back with another video and today I'm going to be talking about something a little bit different than what I've been putting up uh, and I want to talk about something that happened last week that has to do with uh, kids in school and them finding their artistic side or um, creativity and a lot happened on my social media that was good and it was a little bit uh eye-opening I'll put it like that so first things first uh I am Kristen Nicole Mann I actually um am an author a uh, visual artist, and I do uh, teach art as well. And I also sometimes public speak about what I do. And I wanted to really touch on this because it's been a growing question behind the scenes that I've been getting about like, how can I create with my children? Um, you know, what can I do to let them know as a parent that I support them. So there are several things that could be said with that, but I want to start really with a backstory on my Facebook. I put up last week, early last week, about uh, children and their reading levels lowering. Uh, they're at an all-time high in the lower percentage. And when I put that up, a lot of people were, you know, wondering where I got the statistic from, wondering like what I was coming, what what article, what, you know, they wanted hardcore facts. And honestly, Google it, it's everywhere. And if you have visited the schools lately, or um, if you're in interactions with children, you will know that this is actually an issue and I'm not really making it up. So my inquisitive self, I'm like, okay. I mean, it sparked a whole lot of people on my uh, comments and I just went a little bit further with the digging. I was like, okay, let me see like what, what is what is the disconnect? And obviously we know the pandemic happened. So that was a major traumatic situation, not for only us adults, but I want the parents to know if you are watching, they also went through it as well, the children. So we have to take in account that it was not just traumatic for us, but it was traumatic for them. So... That could be a possibility of why they are delayed. Also, they have da -da -da, electronics. So electronics play a, a heavy role in their lives. Um, it's not something that we're going to be able to backtrack and keep out of their lives. I know a lot of schools have implemented getting rid of the cell phones in um, high school. And that's great. And they've seen improvements, but these kids coming into this world do not know a world without technology. So I was just researching, doing, you know, my thing with finding out, you know, what's the disconnect, um, looking at like news articles, looking at, um, you know, the news stations uh, around the world. I'm in, I'm based in New York. So Obviously, New York City came up a lot. Uh, there's a lot of stuff and drama going on with their school board and their um, leadership over the uh, schools in New York City. And so this one popped up and um, they were talking about phonics missing out of the school. Then it dawned on me. I was like, aha. That's what's missing. And I went on and looked at all like nationwide, some of the um, news stations covered this particular problem. And I was like, you know what? This is what is missing from 
the kids learning how to read. Now, if you are my age or you're like, I don't know when they took it out of school, honestly, but I remember hooked on phonics. I remember phonics being taught at school and they don't do that no more. Um, there are some teachers that are, you know, going against the grain of what their county wants them to teach and they're doing, they're teaching that, but the the schools aren't teaching phonics no more. And I was like, this is the disconnect. And so it has helped me. That's the first eye-opening um, moment that I had because I'm like, okay, this is helping me write my children's books like with more and more depth of phonics, like honing in on what phonics is and if you don't know what I'm talking about, I always have to bring up the definition because I don't want to ever assume everybody knows what I'm talking about. Uh, but I'm going to say exactly what the definition says, and it's a method of teaching people to read by correlating sounds with letters or groups of letters in an alphabetic writing system. So... Let's see what an example of phonics is. So the word cat has three letters and three sounds, C-A-T. And um, whereas the word flower has six letters, but four sounds, F-L-O-W-E-R. So flow, it, be, it will say flower. Flower, flower, C A T. So you are training the child to count as they're going. And it also, um, there are four types of phonics. So it's synthetic, analog, analogy. I, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Analogy analytic and embedded phonics. Um, and they do not teach this in the schools no more. Um, the pros, it starts with the familiar and builds on it to reach unfamiliar words. Repetition and clustering of the words help children learn patterns and language. Times student can get students can get away with guessing words without knowing all phonomes and then less structured than synthetic phonics. Um, that was analogy phonics. Um, the synthetic phonics, prose, structured instruction, helps students blend phonomes, phonemes, feminine, phonemes, I can't even pronounce this, <laughs> and build new words. Um, backed by research as a highly effective method, kinds primarily involves undifferentiated whole class instruction and phonemes. I don't know why I can't say that. Are used in decontextualized ways. So again, you have synthetic phonics, analytic phonics, analogy phonics, embedded phonics, and you know, I was just doing some deep diving, and my point is, as an author of children books, I've recognized that the new books in the stores, they no longer have, like, rhythm to them. Like, y'all remember Chicka Chicka Boom Boom and, um, you know, the Dr. Seuss books and all of that. They had rhythm within their 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 words, they were rhyme. Um, you would feel like you're reading like a song. And these newer books, I recognize they don't really have that flow, that rhythm that I had as a kid. And so I'm like taking it back to that. And I'm going to be producing some, some other books with that style. Um, I do have a butterfly book that rhymes um, just like you know, a song because I really got inspired by reading Rainbow. 
um, and Butterfly in the Sky. And I just went off of that and I just wrote a children's book that was an uh, easy peasy, quick read uh, with pictures of butterflies. And if you want to go get that, that's on uh, Amazon under Kristen Nicole Mann. Um, butterfly, butterfly, how do you fly? Oh, how you fly so high. Uh, you could go check that out if you would like. Uh, the second thing, because I'm not trying to make this video long. I sparked um, a wave of people on my post that I put up with kids, arts, and crafts. Uh, and co my, come to my knowledge, I didn't know <laughs> that this was going to happen, but there was a lady on the post. Now, the crafts, the arts and crafts that I posted, you have to have a parent um, guide the child with the arts and crafts that I posted. Now, I somehow, this lady saw my post. She wasn't my friend. I don't know who she is. She got on there and she was highly upset. She said, this is not art. Um, Parent-led art is is not art. You're, you're confining the child to blah, blah, blah. I mean, she put like a whole posts about her having a BA in early childhood and this is not process art and process art is better than um, constru instructed art and all this stuff. So, you know, I, <laughs> at first my initial reaction was, okay, I'm going to chew this lady out. Then I took a step back and I just nicely said to her, Thank you for your comment. I understand that you are passionate because you have a degree in this. And I, you know, I appreciate your words and I pretty much told her I have a, a nice day, um, but I'm not taking a post down. And she continued and some other parents, teachers, uh, you name it, was on there under her name saying, you know, why are you doing this? you know, this is, this is rude, that type of thing. But when I looked into what she was saying, I understood there was a way that she could have said it for me to understand better. Uh, and I'm not going to, you know, go in on that, but I do understand what she was saying. And this was another eye opener that helped me as an art teacher, um, as someone who is passionate about adults and children knowing their creative side, I really took a look into process art and recognized that this also isn't something that is allowed uh, enough for the children to express and explore themselves. And honestly, when we as adults explore more, we become more inspired and that doesn't go away as a child. Like once you get an adult, like you have to continue that in order to become inspired and come up with new things, innovation, imagination, all of that goes together. And I looked it up and I was like, you know what? I'm going to take what she said and I'm going to implement this even more into me teaching one-on-one, uh, me and my art artistry, uh, because it isn't uh, promoted enough or it isn't talked about enough where uh, process art, again, let's go to the definition because I want to make sure that everybody knows what I'm talking about. And maybe you can implement this into your um creativity as well. And it's usually geared more towards preschool um, and younger kids, but honestly, you can do it all the way up until you're 70. Um, so pro process art is an artistic movement where the end product of art and craft uh, is not the principal focus. The process of its making is one of the most relevant aspects, if not the most important one. The gathering, sorting, collating, 
associating patter patterning patterning and moreover the initiation of actions and proceedings process artists saw art as pure human expression process art defends the idea that the process of creating the work of art can be an art piece itself artist robert morris predict predicated anti-form process and time over an objectual finished product. Now, this movement started in the 1960s in the U.S. and the, in Europe, um, and its roots in performance art, uh, the data movement, and more traditionally, the drip paintings of Jackson Pollock, and in its employment of serendipity. And so, I don't know if you're familiar, I'm going to try to put uh, this artwork up. Uh, so Jax, Paul Jackson Pollock, he created the drip technique. And the crazy part about this, y'all, is that I started out just doing like drip. Uh, like I would just let the paint like drip down the canvas and I, it it didn't matter where it went. I was just implementing all these things, not even knowing that I was like taking a piece of art history and putting it in my work. And then somewhere along the way, I became a square. And I was I was like trying to be perfect. And I was trying, because I think once you exchange money, it really like, it's a good thing, but it it also could be a bad thing because you think you have to like keep this caliber of work that you someone paid you for, but you don't you cut off the innovation. And so let me see if I can find uh Paul Jackson Pollock picture. And you've probably seen it before. But it looks like a lot is going on. Let's see. Okay, this is his work. You can't really see that, but it's like a bunch of drips on top of each other. Um, let me see if I can pull up something else. And he would just splatter, like, go look him up. You could just see, like, he just splatters it all over. Um, then you have Robert Morris. Let's see. And these people have passed. Um, Okay, so here's like one of his pieces. This is like a cloth, but it's like cut a certain way and he was doing art like this. So this is what you call process art and it's like, you're not worried about the end goal. So if you, let's say you start a project with your kids or by yourself, you have this blank canvas and you literally just go with what's in your imagination. You don't try to think about, okay, I want this to look like this at the end. Like you just go. That's what that means. So this lady was kind of scolding me about you know, um, this, what I posted because the crafts, arts and crafts were like more structured. Um, and I was coming from a, a lens of, you know, just putting stuff out there, like ideas out there for parents. I wasn't really thinking about process art or whatever other kind of art. So, it really was an eye opener and I thank her if she ever watches this or gets on my YouTube. I really thank her for expanding 
my perspective of art yet again, because honestly, art is not supposed to be like in the box and society makes you really try to color in the lines. Like you probably heard that before. So I am, my future is going to consist of one, me amplifying my writing techniques better um, to hone in on the phonics so the kids can like not only have a cute book, but learn how to read at the same time. I am um, still teaching my son how to read. Uh, it's something that's not easy for everyone. Everyone doesn't have the same, you know, ways of learning. And so my mission is to, you know, just get better in doing, gifting, gifting that to the kids. Like, it's just, you know, a mission. And then with the artwork, it's going to help me be on a mission as well, because I'm like, that's what is missing when it comes to these children experiencing art, it's not process art. It's like, make this and make it look like this. Like, I'm going to give you the example. It's just like the sip and paints the adults do. I, I love teaching them, but honestly, after a while, I'm like, you're copying a picture and you're not really able to embody the experience of using your imagination. Now, in my classes, if you want to book any, let me know because I do virtual. But in my classes, I tell them to add elements of themselves in the picture. Make it what you want. Don't try to cross every T, dot every I. Make it what you want. And they come up with this beautiful, unique creation and nobody looks alike um, and they're satisfied. And so those are the type of classes I want to teach even more. Like I want them to explore with their hands. I want them like, I did some messy artwork earlier and I don't know if I can, it's like back there, but I just use my hands because I was like, I got to break through this, like trying to be a neat freak. Like I just got to this boring, dry point. And I'm so glad that that lady commented what she did. So I just wanted to get on and talk about that because parents need to know if you're not a parent and you just like art, you need to know as well. Um, if you have nieces or nephews or you have little cousins, uh, take, take them on like a little picnic or um, now that it's fall, go to the park and take them outside and do something that's out of the box. Let them just explore. I did on last week, I let my son do the shaving cream. And although we were inside because it was raining, um, he was able to do that on top of aluminum foil. We added some paint to add a little bit of color. So stuff like that, you know, we got to let kids be kids. But uh, like and subscribe to my channel. I will be on talking more about stuff like this. And I hope that you go check my books out. Um, just type in Kristen Nicole Mann on Amazon and they're all there. And I hope to hear from you all soon. And I will be back. So talk to you later. Have a good evening. Bye.